With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to rain-soaked Miami, Florida. This crowd a few minutes ago stirred into action at the side of their Dolphins emerging from the Hard Rock Stadium tunnels, and we are ready to go as the Dolphins get set to match up with the New York Jets. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Set to go now on a wet and rainy afternoon. And we are underway from Miami. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. And here's a look at their leader, standing 30-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. That's a matchup maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues. Yeah, I think back to my high school coach, John Ford, he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays, you know, he'd say foul it away, lad. Foul it away because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say laddie or did he say lad? Well, it just depends on what he was feeling at the moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Eh. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. A look now at the Miami offense. I know we don't like to get totally bogged down in numbers, but Miami was 24th in offense in 2016. Should not have been a surprise, though. Brand new coaching staff, brand new offense. Took a little while to get going, but by the end of the year, they were starting to look like a really potent attack. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. In his third year now, here's the punter, Matt Darr, to kick this away. Back deep for the Jets, Jalen Marshall. A big rush, and it's blocked. Jets come after him, and they get him. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And it's a touchdown for the Jets. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. 
and we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. Now Cat and Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. A handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Ajayi last year, 1,272 yards, third most in a single season in Dolphin history. And he helped transform Miami into a playoff team in 2016. up to about the 40. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. This Jets defensive unit, Charles, particularly as you look at the safety position, a couple of rookies that have really excelled early, right? And they picked these guys specifically to come in and play early. And I'm talking about Jamal Adams, the rookie out of, out of LSU, and Marcus May, the rookie out of Florida. Safeties, rookies, and playing really, really well. Mays played more snaps than any rookie in the NFL to date. So we've got a second and five. Now it's a giant. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. He lost two there. And it's third down. The previous play was a nice run, so they came back with the draw. I think they were trying to fool the defense into thinking they would throw the ball and wanted to run it again. Unsuccessful, but this team is definitely showing they want to keep it on the ground. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. He'll drop to throw. And it's caught by Parker. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. And now a first down following that long game. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. 
frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that will make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And defensively going with a dime set. Six DBs on third and four. Here we go now. Green, 39. Ah! They're going to look to throw. And he's got his man. That's Landry. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. So the offense has it first and 10. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Jay and Jay taking it in from the 20. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball, too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Now Andrew Frank's on for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it's capped off by a touchdown run by Jay Ajayi. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is taken at the three. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. New York Jets, week five, beat the Cleveland Browns. Josh McCown bringing out that Jets offense. McCown was 23 of 30 in his return to Cleveland. It wasn't the most compelling of games. It was 3-0 at halftime. But, hey, the Jets now sitting at 3-2. and two. Isn't it interesting that a game like this, as you're saying, wasn't the most compelling? And in Major League Baseball playoffs, where runs are being scored at an incredible rate, right? So it's kind of a juxtaposition. But they did what they had to do to win the game, and the Jets have won way more games than anyone would have predicted in preseason, don't you think? Absolutely. And by the way, you mentioned baseball. I guess the Cleveland fans still have that to cheer for. That they do. Let's go! First carry for Matt Forte. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And we take a look now at the New York offense. The struggles of the New York Jets offense in 2016 were well documented. They struggled to run it, struggled to throw it. A lot of that because of inconsistent quarterback play. A big reason why they ended up 26 overall in offense in the NFL and went from 10 and 6 in 2015 to 5 and 11 in 2016. A 
Again they run, again it's Forte. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. And let's run through the Dolphins' defense. In 2016, Miami was 29th overall in total defense. Not a number that's going to excite them or one that they can hang their hat on. But what redeemed them last year was their third down defense. Fourth best in the NFL. And as we all know, that's the down that you really point to and target. Get off the field on third down. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Working from the gun, McCown. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Jet first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. So here we go, first and 10 now. Let's go! Now a play fake here on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. But in tapping those toes, he tried to get both inbounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both <laughs> feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. To throw is McCown. Got a man. It's the rookie, Ardarius Stewart. And he's brought down. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. It's lining up first and ten. Let's go. Blue Blue They'll run it now out of the gun. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, defensively rallying to the ball after the nice move. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Here we go now. Three, yeah. On the draw, McCown leaves it to Forte. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. In most cases, the best asset for a running back is his vision. In this case, it didn't work out so well. Instead of running the draw up the middle, he tried to break it out to the left. Unsuccessful. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. From the gun, it's McCown. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Marshall. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. scooped up and this is a live football I have to believe that if you're the team trying to block a field goal you don't mind this weather all right the rain probably is going to help you because so many things can go wrong for the guys trying to kick the ball 
It's as simple as maybe you just lose your footing. You kind of spin out like a tire in the snow, not getting traction, and you create a space and someone comes through. And I think for everybody, snapper, holder, kicker, everything slows down maybe a fraction of a second. And a fraction of a second and a field goal try, that can be all the difference. I love how you describe that. Everything slows down, but it's a deliberate slowdown, isn't it? Yep. Because everyone's trying to be more careful and more deliberate to make sure it's executed. Three and a half to go, first quarter. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this Foster. afternoon. Offense. And that'll set them back five. Still first down. Three and a half to go, first quarter. Here we go now. Three, 19. Here's a Jay. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. So much for having too many defensive linemen. Remember the reaction when the Jets took Leonard Williams? They said they've got too many. Uh-uh. Guy's a pro bowler in his second season. Yeah, seven sacks in that sophomore campaign last year. intercepted but he couldn't hang on and it's third down oh man that was close the opportunity to change momentum big play right in his hands unable to come down with it a sigh of relief no doubt on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground the Dolphins on third down they've been okay two for three thus far this is third and 17 He'll look to throw. And he checks this one down to Williams. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Give him six on the play, and it'll be fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Matt Dar now. And remember, he had his first punt blocked. on the return and the Jets offense will be backed up to start this drive as they've got it first and 10. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. Start on the ground with Forte. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Back to the ground on first, it's Forte. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. 
Kidd had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Second down following the run. Forte gets the handoff from McCown, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Off the play fake to Forte, McCown. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And that will fall incomplete. Oh, they took a shot there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. A touchdown apiece here in this first quarter of play. It's a tight game here early, and we'll be back to South Florida after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Jets in possession as we begin quarter number two here. They've got it second and ten to start things out. When taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy toes if that one was completed. McCown on third down. Dumps off to Powell. <laughs> and he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And 21 yards there as they convert on third. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. First down, this is Forte. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. First down. Forte. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. On 
second down, Forte. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. one down to about the 10 yard line give him a couple on the carry there second and eight the best defensive linemen they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen they have excellent hands they can throw people off on a play we just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position Here we go now. Green, 39. they'll run again again it's power and he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Bilal Powell, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Jets have taken the lead. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Point after now from Catanzaro. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. A 10-play drive that time. And it's finished off by the touchdown run coming from Bilal Powell. Zero out now as he'll kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So now here come the Dolphins. three as he takes this up near the 25. Pardon me, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm, but when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. to get this up over the 40. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. 
Well, he appears well on his way to another big game. You remember 2016, partner. He became just the fourth player in NFL history to have three 200-yard rushing games in a season. Two of them were back-to-back. -back. Steelers in Week 6, Bills in Week 7. Switch it up here and look to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. They'll look to throw. He's going to air one out. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's Matt Dar now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. Nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Green, green, and now green, whistles green. and a flag. And I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction defense. Partner, we saw these Dolphins jump off sides a bunch last year. But that's not unusual for those guys like Sue who want to get that quick start into the offensive backfield, and they do make a lot of plays doing that. penalty it's 410 and a short gain here across the 10 to the 12 a couple of Dolphins in on the stop not a whole lot there after the penalty but remember it was first and five not first and ten so now they can keep grinding out first downs and good things can happen for them just second and short coming up Jermaine Kurz, and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Jet first down.
They'll run it now out of the gun. And some space here. That's a good chunk of yardage that's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? McCann going to hand this one off to Powell. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Good luck trying to get your running game going against Ndamukong Sim. I mean, he is so strong. Just trying to move him, take one guy, two guys, whatever. I wish you a whole lot of luck. He usually converts an offensive running game into rubble. short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. On third and long, it's McCown. Caught, Safarian Jenkins, right side. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. On is the second-year man from Sam Houston State, Lachlan Edwards, to punt it away. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And it'll be Dolphin football. A chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. Now the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. Hang on now. Three, 19. Ah! They go play action here on first down. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And he's brought down after a good game. So that one will be accepted. a play fake as they set up to throw. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Julius Thomas, 44 yards. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown.
Now Franks for the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, long touchdown pass into the end zone. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. So out now come the Jets. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. The drive begins with a run by Forte. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. They stay on the ground, Forte again. He takes this for three to the 29. The Jets on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. McCown going to throw. Throwing deep for Stewart. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. <laughs> 51 yards on the punt there. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. the drive with a Jay, and he'll power his way up near the 25. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Good strong run against the 3-4 set, and that 3-4, you've got to have you guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center, the nose, he usually has to take on double teams, but when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage, and that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. 
This is a J. <laughs> And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. A minute 58 to go in this first half of play. We'll come back to Miami after this. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Larry Ridley will have first half highlights and analysis. LR, plenty to show in this one. Going to be a busy man at intermission. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Dolphin got going a little early. False start. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Here we go on first and 15. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. It's a five-yard pickup, so essentially they get the penalty yardage back, and it's back to second and 10. Second and ten. They set up the screen to a J. And give him nine yards on the second downstream play. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He'll look to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. Here's Matt Darr now as he's on to punt for Miami. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. They're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. And the Jets set to take the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Give. This is Forte. And now running right through it. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about, Dust, all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Now, coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Fresh set of downs here. Let's go. Green, 39. They'll give it up to Forte. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big time play there. All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Right now, we've got a tie game, and that just means exciting football for us in the second half, as we'll have two teams playing two quarters to decide a winner. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Dolphins lined up at the 20. Ajaye's got it on the run. He gone as he sprints to the end zone. We're brand new at seven. Third down at the 33. McCown's gonna complete the pass, and he ends up at their own 49-yard line. But they'd be unable to capitalize, missing a field goal later on the drive. Now second and eight. Powell's gonna take it up the middle, and he'll end up sprinting into the end zone. Jeff is up now by seven. First and 10, Thomas is by himself here, and he'll take this all the way for the touchdown. The Dolphins tied up 14. Okay, LR, we are indeed all even as these teams come back out for the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Jets' offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game, we'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. They start the second half with a run by Forte, and they're able to get this one across the 35. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. It's really come into vogue to talk about the, the different gaps that a defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? But where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double A-gap blitz, that's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A-gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Cameron Wake able to use that strength and get him for a loss of two. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. Complete there, a nice hit, jars the ball free and brings up third down. 
And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. The Jets on third down, two for five to this point. This is third down and 12. Check. McCown looking to throw. And that is incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. And he'll give it here to his running back. Jay and Jay's going to go. He's at the 50, the 40, the 20, 10, 5, and all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Jay and Jay, 98 yards. And the Dolphins have broken our tie as they take the lead. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Franks to add the PAT. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Franks now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The New York set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now a handoff left. It's Forte. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Well, there's what we call an even front or an odd front. And an odd front's real easy to figure out. If that guy is lined up over the nose of the center, 
typically that's an odd front defense, odd number of people, meaning 3-4 versus the 4-3, which is an even front. You've got to control those guys in the middle, whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front. If those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And in that play, they were able to actually take care of business. This is Forte. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Here's Forte, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run, and at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. This is the running back, Powell. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position, the guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front is eating up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. McCown giving to Powell on the draw. And he takes it across midfield to the 45. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. I can never stump you on stats, but go ahead and let the people know. Who was second in the NFL in 2016 in yards per carry? It was that man, Bilal Powell, right at five and a half. He may have had to share some carries in the backfield with Matt Forte, but boy, he took advantage of his touches. third down. It's Powell. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. He needed two. He got one. And that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. Third and two and they ran the ball for only one yard. And everybody's going to scream at the offense. Well, let's give a lot of credit to the defense on that play. Defensive front out leveraged the offensive line. They got more people to the football. Yeah, they won that battle in a big way, and they're forcing a big decision now by the guys on offense. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. He's been terrific so far. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And the Dolphins getting set to go here. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And yeah, we'll see how determined they are. Here's a handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there. You see these nice, explosive, strong runs. And this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows his offensive line is going to give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. They run again with a Jay. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. All right, here we go. Green, 39. 
There's the option going left on second down. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. It's a loss of four. Now third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third down and 12. He'll drop to throw. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Muhammad Wilkerson able to drop him for a loss of 12. And it'll be fourth down. They were trying to set up that screen, try to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. Ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception. But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. Here's Matt Dar now as he's on to punt for Miami. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fielded at the 20. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Jets will take over first and 10. The New York set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Forte. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed him down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. From the gun on third, McCown. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. This is taken at about the 14. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. He has a chance to hit that often elusive 200-yard mark on this drive. And most of the time during a game, people aren't keeping track of individual statistics. Are you sure? Well, a lot of the runners <laughs> kind of know. But I'll guarantee you, someone has sent word into the offensive line that he's got a chance to get over 200 on this drive. That should give them a little extra motivation because they love it when backs break that barrier. Absolutely. We'll see if he can do it. Let's go. 319. On play action, they'll throw. They'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Demario Davis coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. 
Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. few times here today this run's not going to go anywhere no gain on the play this time and it'll be a third and long situation coming up and he got off the end there very quickly to make that play yeah it was almost like the bullet train wasn't it i mean just zoom quick 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 and what a terrific play holding them to no gain Green, 39. the play action fake they'll look to throw Going deep here for Landry. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on and it brings up fourth down. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. Here's Matt Dar now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this will pin him nicely inside the 20 as it's out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. And now out come the Jets. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And he'll be taken down at the 18. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. Working from the gun, McCown. He completes it to Stewart. And they'll get him down here at the 23. That catch good for five. It's third down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. They'll try and get it with Forte. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. take this one up to the 35 yard line give him 10 yards on the pickup and it'll be second and very short that was a good strong run there while it won't pick up a first down it was definitely something needed by that offense a positive run they got a good push by their guys up front maybe something they can build on as this game continues
is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's Jet football, but they trail here as we start the fourth quarter. on third down tonight. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Green, 39, green. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Only a yard there on the keeper, but that's all he needed. First down. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, 39. From the gun, it's McCown. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. William Hayes in there to get him for a loss of five. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. second complete to Stewart right side four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down The Jets on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 16. Here's McCown to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Wake in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Well, they went with a the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down, you bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. <laughs> we'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And possession will switch hands first and 10. 
And out come the Dolphins now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. a Jay and an alley to run and they're able to get this one across the 35 that one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football on this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well and as I'm watching this I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason he told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs give me your three top runs and right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. The Dolphins on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and 11. Looking to throw. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Here's Matt Dar now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. come after him and it's blocked it's picked up and this is a live ball remember and it's a touchdown for the Jets partners you well know every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block sometimes the guy just finds his way back there doesn't matter the play happens and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block And now a critical extra point attempt here. And no sweat. He puts it through. And we are tied here in the fourth.
So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. Able to slither by. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. first down almost not fair the big guy running the corner route being able to lean and push and get to where he wants so how do you stop it a lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him a bigger body guy who can handle him physically but a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route It's a Jai. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And to give this time to the tailback. <laughs> A big hit. Knocked out sideways right there at the 43. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. The Dolphins on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This time it's third and three. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. This one away by the punter, Dar. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The New York set to take the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. out incomplete you get a tight end like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment but here he's the one that has to absorb the contact and as a result unable to hold on to the football and on second and ten now Shotgun here for McCown. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. Go, go, go. 
Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Forte gets the handoff from McCown. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Now it's second and seven. Off the play fake to Forte, McCown throwing deep for Stewart, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. To throw is McCown. And this is going to be incomplete. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he's on to punt for New York. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field, and they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And over the middle, this is Parker. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Right, here we go. Now a play fake here on first down. It's caught Stills right side. And he's taken down, but not before he gets us into enemy territory across the 40. That goes for a gain of 31. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, <laughs> that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. to throw now on first down. Carew's got it complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten more there and another first down.
Tie game late, and the offense really has to be conscious of the clock here as it's becoming a factor late in this ball game. And he'll give it here to his running back. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Tie game here. Time starting to run down. The defense really needs to try and keep this game tied, see if they can get the ball back for the offense. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They face a second down, but they are in field goal range. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. And to give this time to the tailback. He lost two there, and it's third down. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. The Dolphins on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and seven. They try the left side here with Williams. Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So a defensive timeout. Chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So now here's the kicker, Andrew Franks, in a pressure spot. This for the lead in the final stages. And this will be off the right upright, but he banks it in. A high degree of difficulty there, but he gets it to go. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. So apparently the bank is open and fortunate for them as it gives them a fourth quarter lead. And you talk about being fortunate. Fortune was definitely on their side there. I think nine times out of ten, this ball hits the bar and comes right down. But he manages to put a little English on it, and he gets it to go. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all the time. Oh, they practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of cases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. They'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Marshall. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. He 
He's back to throw. That's complete over the middle to Stewart. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. He'll look to throw. That's complete over the middle to Anderson. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Back to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Anderson. And he's brought down. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Try to hurry to the line on the very outskirts of field goal range. Back to throw. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. the 30 31 yard line call it a gain of a yard and it's going to bring up third and five McCown going to hustle his guys to the line now McCown under pressure and he will go down sat back at the 38 and with just inside of 10 seconds to go they'll burn their final timeout nine seconds left So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And we've got a timeout. Nine seconds remaining. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to potentially send us to overtime. So his big play capability in full display there as he's able to return that punt for a touchdown. Victory very likely now for the Dolphins as they take a knee here. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game, but 
These two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Get your notes laminated, because you know, open air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly. Wise beyond his years. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Dolphins are winners here as we say so long from South Florida.